Hey, it's Gardner Shakol. I am here with my younger sisters, Alice and Sherry, and this is our very first garden chat. I do a lot of YouTube videos. I did my first Instagram live last week. Uh, that was interesting because the video started upside down, so I figured that one out. Just to kind of say what's going on in the garden. But the reality is one of the things I like to do was get out and go to other people's houses and go to other people's garden. But that's pretty much been shut down since now we have the stay at home um, order from Governor Holcomb in Indiana. And I mean, a lot of people have that across the United States and other places in the world. So I'm like, well, how can I still talk about gardening and connect in a more real and meaningful way? And I decided to do this garden chat. And this kind of started on our, my Facebook earlier today on our my Gardener Chico page. I shared a uh, I shared from the Iowa Agricultural Literacy Foundation um, their post that said April is National Garden Month. What a great way to get outside, learn about growing plants, and enjoy the spring weather. And then comment what you will be growing in your garden this year. So I shared the post and said, "What are you growing or planning to grow this year?" And both my sisters responded to the post. So I said, "Hey, maybe we can get together and talk." So the title of this chat is gardening in any space so first i'm going to give you guys a little bit of a background of gardening i guess in our family and let them chime in about that and then we can kind of talk about some of our different situations with gardening uh, be, uh, because my tagline if you listen enough even though my children sometimes act like they don't know what it is is <laughs> any gardener just have to get ready get set and grow and i truly believe it doesn't matter what your situation is that you can grow your food so <clears throat> all of us lived in the same house until we decided to you know get grown and move out and I would say I was in high school when this happened. So you guys were probably in middle school and elementary school when dad decided to uh, have a garden in our house. And before that, our, um, our dad's uncle Moses, which is our great uncle, he had a huge garden on the south side of Indiana. And dad decided, hey, let's have a garden at our house. And dad took like the back of the yard. And if you've been on my YouTube channel and my gardening page, which is gardenerschicole.com, you've seen uh, my dad's garden, our dad's garden. And we by default kind of ended up participating in that. And we still, um, still uh, do that. And there's our cousin, George. Uh, hi, George. Hello. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So then uh, I left, like I said, went to college, all that good stuff. Went to college to get a degree, met Mr. Barnes, so I was an extra plus. And then we moved into an apartment and then for a year, then we moved into a house. Then a few years after that, I wanted to have a garden, talk to dad about it. And he said, I'll come out. He bought a three by six garden raised bed and built it. And that's how I got started with gardening. And I've kind of been adding on ever since. We had it for 10 years. If you look at my page, you will see 11 years of time. But in 2011, I was on bed rest at the end of 2010 through 2011 when I was pregnant with my twin sons. And so I didn't intentionally garden. I did have honeydew melons that year. But I, I say that I've been gardening for 10 years because I really don't count 2011 because stuff grew and I literally did nothing. <laughs> um, so, Alice, how about you share a little bit of your gardening background or what you've done uh, over the years? Well, I say I started my first garden while I was married. Oh, what was that? Two years ago. Um, we, <laughs> I honestly don't remember the year, but I had my first garden. Um, we first just started with some rows, dug up some ground, started with some rows. The following year, um, we got a little, a little more organized with the garden. Um, and we had like, tons of stuff that year, like huge uh, watermelon, huge. Um, cucumbers and we had, like tons of stuff um once i got divorced i did move back to indy didn't have a garden for a while i had some house plants though and then um probably like april may last year i had attempted to start a garden but due to some circumstances i moved and did wasn't able to take care of that garden but again i had some house plants um i still got like two of my house plants but now, since I got a balcony at our apartment, I want to start like some container gardening. 
have enough space probably for like maybe like one, two uh, pots. I got a couple of hooks up here. I got hang some stuff. So that's why I want to do the container garden this year. But I know a little information about it, but I mean, not, not tons of stuff. I watch tons of YouTube videos. But that's basically what I know about gardening. All right. And Sherry, tell us about a little <laughs> bit about your background with gardening and what you're interested in. Well, my experience with gardening was basically when I was growing up and dad had us helping in the garden with the um, the ruler, the little uh, shovel to dig the hole. It had to be perfect. It wasn't perfect. You had to redo it. Um, I've, I've obviously never had my own garden since this is my first apartment. We don't have like, like our own like little, I guess, little back patio or whatever. So I've never really heard if you can like grow a plant inside or not. So that's something I want to look into. All right. So as you see here, I, I live in a house. I moved um, from my first house that I lived in for 12 years to my current house. And I really like my house, my yard. I would say, um, I mean, they've been to my house. I think it's twice as big as my other yard. It's big. It's mm -hmm. pretty big. Um, so I had to start over. I did take some of my herbs up out of the ground and move them, but it was just too much. And then the person who in the buying our house, um, his mother really liked to raise bed and wanted to use them. And I was just like, do I really want to deal with uh, disassembling um, all these raised beds, dealing with all the dirt being everywhere, moving them here. And then uh, Mr. Barnes, who um, participation in the garden mostly involves eating what I grow. Um, I had some <laughs> comments about kind of some things. So I said, you know what? Let's start from scratch. Let's ask Mr. Barnes what his opinions are because I told him, like, look, I am open to feedback while I'm planning. Not like after <laughs> stuff was in the ground. I, I got all this dirt in it and you talking about, well, if you would have put it here. No, 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 no. So we've been having lots of communication about everything that I've been putting. I'm actually outside of my garden. It's probably hard to tell. Let me see if I can lift this up. Um, behind me, nope. Uh, yeah, so that's like the kale that we planted the other day. Probably need to get my head out the way. There you go, a little bit of it. So I'm outside my, I got transition glass. They kind of shade no one, but y'all still see me. But they're in apartments and Alice is outside on her balcony. And yep. that's the place where she wants to do some container gardening. And Sherry's question is, well, what if I don't have an outdoor space, but I do have decent sunlight? Can I grow anything? And I would say to both of these questions, yes. So let's talk about container gardening. The one thing, so when you buy a house or you get an apartment, it's never perfect. Like you have almost everything you want, but there's still something you might have wanted. The thing that I really liked about my first house and my second house doesn't have is a sunroom. In my sunroom, I did container gardening. It just made more sense because how my sunroom was set up, you had to go through it to get to the deck, to get to the patio. And I didn't think it just, you just had to have things in the container because it's a, a sunroom. It's not in the ground. And you have to think about when it comes to container planting, how deep the roots will grow down. Because if the roots can't go all the way down, you're going to stunt the growth of the plant. So it may grow, but you may not get as much from it. And so mostly what I grew in my sunroom was most like I would start stuff in my sunroom. So I would start maybe some seedlings, like I would start some kale or start some plants and then transfer them outside. That was one thing I did. The other thing I did was to grow a lot of earth in my garden. And then I grew some plants that if they didn't get terribly too much sun, they would still be okay but alice is right there's a lot of research involved in trying to figure out what goes and then some of the research is literally trial and error you read about it you're like oh this is gonna work on my space and then it don't grow and then you read about it and you grow something in your space and you're like okay this is getting out of control i don't got any space because this is still growing so alice is there any certain uh are there any types of plants that uh you are looking to grow outside um well I would like to grow tomatoes because Zoe loves tomatoes. Like she would literally sit there and eat a tomato just like an apple. Um, but I would like to grow some tomatoes if possible. And then I know there's some um, like pots that you could hang over like the edge of the balcony, if that makes sense. I thought I'd be doing like some herbs and that. And I have a couple hooks. 
Um, so I thought maybe um, doing like strawberry plant or um, thought I heard it's maybe possible to do like green beans or peas. But but other than that, that's kind of what I've been thinking about so far. And I know it also depends on um, what the area that you're going to grow in. Is it facing north? Is it facing south? And my balcony is facing north. And based on what I've watched, um, that's not always the best area to grow something because it doesn't get sunlight as much as it would if you was growing in a like south facing area. So that's also my issue. Yeah, one of the challenges I have, I wanted to put my herbs. I'm sitting in front of the uh, raised beds where I wanted to put. Well, actually, they're more a container because they have a bottom on it, so the bottom's not out. It's actually still at the bottom. It's a special kind of planter that helps conserve water and all that stuff. Um, since I've played and lived here um, for longer than I, my first house, I'm like, let me get a little fancy. But I wanted just to put the herbs there and put everything else on the other side of the house, but there's no spigot over there. And the only way to make that work is I would have to get a longer hose or get a spigot put on it. And we already had to deal with getting a spigot replaced at the other house. I'm like, I don't want to deal with all that. I'm just, I can put it all over here. The problem is this uh, land behind me all the way to the end, but there's mm -hmm. shit at the end. And the problem I'm running to down there is that I've been coming out to see when the sun comes out, how much hours uh, of light do I have? And then how much hour is the shed shading that space? And yeah. so that helps me determine what I can put over there. I mean, things like spinach would be great because spinach bolts. And for those of you that are watching that don't know what that word means, um, if you've been following me, you should know because I write about it every single year because it happens every single year and I get irritated every single year. But that's when <laughs> it gets hot and the spinach plant starts flowering and it's going to seed. So it bolted into a flower. And mm -hmm. the other thing that tells you that that's about to happen, the spinach, um, it'll be like an oval shape, but then it kind of turns into a triangle uh, shape and the taste of the spinach turns better. If you taste a triangle leaf, spinach uh, leaf versus an oval one, you will find out real quick that it's bolted because it just it, it's nasty because the plant is really conserving its energy to multiply and to make seeds. But if it's in a shady area, that is not getting hot. It may let you. It may help your spinach growing season. So right now behind me, I got kale, two beds of kale, carrots, and radishes. Cause I just wanted to get something outside and start growing something, especially with this uh, COVID nineteen and yesterday. Um, uh, Jerome Adams, um, you know our guy for Indiana, who's now on the national level, um, said that everyone needs to wear a mask when you go out of the house. And so, okay, I, I'll do that, but. I would rather limit my time going out of the house than trying to prepare to cover myself to yeah. go out of the house. Uh, honestly, I'm about to take it back to a winter, you know, take a scarf and just wrap it around my face. Like <laughs> mom used to wrap us more like, y'all know, we in Indiana, so Chris, uh, mm -hmm. Christmas story, that's an like Indiana <laughs> story. Uh, I, mean, I know it's love nationally, but how that mom kind of wrapped his little face up I'm about to be like, hey, let me get a scarf or something and wrap it. And I know they show different ways, and I know about the whole effectiveness of it. But essentially what I'm saying, if I can grow food at home and just go outside and get food and go back inside instead of going to the grocery store, I would like to do that. So that's why I threw something out here while I'm trying to figure out the logistics of everything else. And so, Sherry, you talked about being inside. I think that also works because I think, mm -hmm. I mean, think about – back in the day um, when mom was growing plants inside. I mean, she grew stuff inside. She just had to have yeah. it in that window with all that light. So you really mm -hmm. just have, and I mean, that area got, I mean, that's why we closed that curtain even now when we are over there because it's be too much light <laughs> in that window. But yeah. uh, what type of things are you thinking about growing? Well, I really like um, what is it? Green peppers and uh, tomatoes. Those are two main things that I usually eat very often. Yeah. And uh, I think you definitely could probably, I think when it comes to tomato plants, you got to think about the size because there's two types of tomato plants. You have indeterminate. Those are the plants that just vine and go forever and ever and ever. And, and also you got to be careful about them because if the vine hits the ground, it will draw another root. And it can spread up in their plant. It's crazy. Uh, but then you've got the permanent plants where they have a, a you know, a height. 
I think the mm-hmm. males would do definitely better outside getting like that full direct sun. But I think mm-hmm. there's still some things that you could grow inside to get some sun. Um, like I definitely think you probably could do some lettuce inside or uh, kale inside. Things that they need sun, but uh, they don't need like full like bright sun, like tomatoes and peppers and watermelon mm-hmm. stuff, uh, and stuff like that. So right now, you know, it's the spring season, and I recently. I could say the last few years started growing earlier. When do you guys think you will actually start growing things like trying to figure out now or maybe something more towards the summer? Well, I would like to hopefully get something started sometime this month. Just got to get the containers for it. But I hope we at least have something growing by, by the summertime, though. I'd probably say I'd probably want to start like towards the end of April. So, you know, I can maybe get to the store when I'm able to get in Walmart since the COVID-19 is going on. They're limiting how many people are allowed in the store. So whenever I get a chance to go to Walmart, then, you know, that's when I plan on, you know, starting. Yeah, I recently went to Walmart. I actually went, I've been trying to be strategic when I leave the house because sometimes I need stuff that's not food, but I also am not going to go to two stores. So I went to Walmart. I typically do not shop at Walmart for food, but I have went to Meyer a few weeks ago because I was trying to find bikes for my boys and Meyer selection was just sad for bikes, just period. Went to Walmart. They had tons of bikes, but the thing that irritated me, I walked up, I got the food I needed. I walked up on the bike section. They had a whole row of girl bikes, little streamers, pink, purple, cute. <laughs> Walk around the corner. They pretty much had one bike in every size for boys. So essentially, I was only able to get one bike. But then at the end of the day, when I thought about it, it's really not that deep because can I really teach them both to ride their bike at the same time? No. So, um, uh, Going to stores like Walmart and Meyer allows me to do two things, buy any groceries I need, but also pick up dirt because that's the other thing. Like before, dad built that three by six um, raised bed and I had dirt in there. But every time I added a raised bed, I had to go get more dirt. And I did. I added raised beds over time. Now you're talking about me like doing them all right now. So I did the first four and I was like, and I got dirt for like the next one out of six I got. But I'm like, how does it feel like? So now I'm not getting any more dirt until I have to make a grocery run. Because I'm not going to be going to this. Like, who wants to get COVID-19 because they're going to get a bag of dirt? Like, wouldn't that just be like an embarrassing <laughs> story? <laughs> so right. I did not want that to be my story at all. So I really am not going out when, uh, unless I uh, have to. Uh, so I think we kind of covered that question. So I'm going to move the conversation um, back to our childhood. Uh, what was your favorite part of gardening at home? And what were some things uh, you didn't care so much for? Sound off. Uh, I probably think my favorite part was um, honestly being able to eat the stuff that we grew and learning how to grow the different stuff, like how far apart you need a space and how deep you need to grow, you need fertilizer, like any of that stuff. I like the fact that we that dad never used any um, like chemicals or anything. Mm-hmm. It was basically it was basically an organic garden, which I love. But probably the one thing that I don't like about being outside in general are the bugs. Now, I could do without the bugs. I'm not like scared of them or nothing, but I could do without the bugs. My favorite part was um, growing all the vegetables. But the two things I didn't like, I love green beans, but I do not like sticking my arm all the way in the little vine, getting ate up by the bugs, picking the green beans. And if you miss any green beans, dad's going to come and find you and tell you, you missed these, you need to come pick these. And then the year when dad grew pumpkins and we had about, I don't know, about 10, 12 pumpkin pies, we never had pumpkins again in the garden. I did not like that part. And I'll answer the question, but I think that pumpkin thing is funny because I remember that year and dad was all like, we're going to grow some pumpkins in. First of all, just being black, <laughs> the whole pumpkin thing is controversial because if you think about Thanksgiving, you always typically have pumpkin pie and sweet potato pie. 
Like mm -hmm. mom's family felt like Thanksgiving wasn't Thanksgiving without pumpkin pie. And dad's family felt like Thanksgiving wasn't Thanksgiving without sweet potato pie. And of course, yeah. then like I married Jermaine and he's all like, why y'all have pumpkin pie y'all Thanksgiving? And I, so it's just like, <laughs> and I know it's like a controversial thing, like in the black community, like pumpkin pie is like not a thing, but personally, because we have both, like, I feel like I need both on Thanksgiving. Now I am mm -hmm. not for whipped cream on pumpkin pie. Yuck. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's definitely no, but I definitely would get a slice of pumpkin and a slice of uh, sweet potato pie. And um, also, if a Ruthie ever sees this, um, when uh, hopefully next year we'll be out of this, you know, quarantine, uh, please come with sweet potato pie to Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> no, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember that. And I didn't remember mom going into the refrigerator because we thought all the pumpkin was gone because dad had mom making pumpkin everything. Mom uh -huh. opened that freezer and like yelled something i'm not exactly sure what she said it may not have been appropriate for maybe some of our <laughs> listeners here uh and i go into the kitchen because i'm like why is mom yelling like i don't know but mom's yelling from the kitchen it could have been something like we didn't wash the dishes properly the uh, floor wasn't swept right the table was messy so i really didn't want to know what she was screaming about but also i felt like i was gonna get someone anyway and then mom was just like, oh, pumpkin. There's more pumpkin in here. Like she was just mad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I did notice after that year that dad never grew pumpkins again. So um, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure mom's uh, frustration and uh, multiple comments about having to deal with the pumpkins uh, was uh, part of that reason that never happened again. Mm -hmm. um, but thinking about like stuff I like about gardening, I think the number one thing I like about gardening, I find it relaxing just to get outside. Honestly, if I didn't garden, I don't know how much I would. I mean, I think I would sit outside like and I think I would go outside to like play with my boys. But I don't know how much I would do outside. Like the last time I really played outside is like when we were girls and we would play. Right. But besides that, like, I don't. I, yeah, I don't be outside like that. I like that part. And then I like knowing where my food comes from because, mm -hmm. like, if you try to buy organic in the store, like, you, you look into the bag to see if something's bruised up, if something's already going to turn because it's, it's picked fresh, right? And then by the time it gets to you, it's already starting to decay, which mm -hmm. that's a good thing because it shows like you didn't have chemicals on it, but it's not good for you because by the time you get into your house, you feel like you're going to eat it right then and there. And for me, I can be like, okay. I got some lettuce. I can go out there and pick it fresh right there. And I don't care what anybody says, like a tomato that you grow at your house will never taste like a tomato you got at the grocery store. Point blank, period. Mm -hmm. The thing I dislike, I agree with the bugs. Um, as mom used to say, I have sweet meat. Like, <laughs> anyway, mom used to say that because I would get bit up really bad by mosquitoes and not. Um, not to the point, like it was bad. Like I, I remember she would take me to the doctor a few times. I would have to get ointment because like I would get bitten and I would swell up really bad. And so she's like, oh yeah, you just got that sweet meat. Like who says that? Like, <laughs> I know mom, like, I don't know. Maybe you go pick the green beans for me instead of sending me outside. Like I mean, so definitely, I, I hate, uh, I hate the bugs. Um, and then the other thing is the, the, well, I got a list. So the bugs, and not just the bugs biting you, but the bugs eating up your daggone food, like the aphids. Like aphids, if you don't watch them, those things will just eat up stuff um, like crazy. And then those, those, stink, uh, those stink beetles uh, being everywhere. And then the other thing I don't like uh, are uh, our four-legged friends. Last year, uh, we, bet we were dealing with uh, rabbits and a fox. Um, while we have been at home, uh, at our new house, uh, we have both seen rabbits and we saw a fox in our yard. So, and for those of you that don't know, it was important to us that our boys stayed at the same elementary school. So we only moved four streets over from our first house. We really liked the area we lived in. So we only looked in within a certain radius. Um, so like, I feel like the fox followed us, um, over here and that's not cool. Uh, at all and I, I see I see uh, oh I see we have a question here it says how about collard greens do they need sh uh, shade 
like the spinach? All right, that's a good question. So it's been a while since I've grown collard greens now that I think about it. And let me tell you why it's been a while. Um, our dad has a huge garden. Well, that's something he didn't stop. Just because we moved out, uh, he didn't stop. And you could ask our mother about all the stuff she has to do now, um, now that we have moved out. So, like, we go to the house now. It's just like, uh, can y'all can y'all go out there and pick pick some bees or get get some green bees? I'm like, mom, I came to visit you. I didn't come to go outside. <laughs> no? uh, but uh, but part of the reason I haven't grown is because some of the stuff our dad grows so much of it, it doesn't even make sense to grow it because first of all, mom gonna ask you. It's actually not really asking. It's like you get told to do it and like. Yeah, it's like we're grown, but like the other thing, like, do you really want to argue with your mom about going to pick some greens? No, really. It's just best to go pick it and maybe mumble under your breath while she's far away out of your shot. <laughs> but with the collard greens, you don't have to keep them in shade. They can uh they can do uh, just fine in full sun. Uh they uh yeah. Uh, cause dad grows them throughout the in entire summer. So they don't have to deal with that. It's more the things that tend to bolt are like spinach, uh, bok choy. I did that before. It's kind of like cabbage that you uh, get in. It looks like lettuce, but it's like an Asian cabbage. I did that for a couple of years because, um, I, we had some dish where we had some bok choy and I'm like, Hey, let's grow some bok choy. And then I thought it bolted just like the spinach. I was like, nah, I can't be, I can't have two things in my and my boys really like spinach. Um, and that's the other thing I'll say. When kids are around you when they're small and you're gardening, that food becomes their norm. So then they tend to like vegetables more because it's like, oh, I'm spinach is what you're giving me. <laughs> Brussels sprouts is what you're giving me. That's uh, what you have to eat. So uh, uh, thanks, George, uh, for that question. That was a, a really a good question. Um, missing anything else i just like yeah just keeping the four-legged creatures out and sometimes you try to keep them out and it doesn't go well a few years back i ended up using some netting to protect my strawberries and a, a chick monk got caught in the netting and uh uh didn't go well uh did not survive um its encounter with the net and then i was like look i straight got mr barnes i was like oh i need you to come get this chick <laughs> No dead animal. <laughs> like, look, I, I'll be out here every single day, uh, pulling and weeds. That's the other thing I hate. I just hate weeds. So I'm hoping not to deal with that as much. In my other garden, as I added raised beds, I tilled up the whole entire ground and put the raised beds on top of it. And but then I was still dealing with weeds. And so, as you guys know, over the years, I started putting down those uh those tiles around the raised bed because I was not only fighting the weeds in the raised beds, but the weeds outside of it. This time, um, let me see if I can show y'all. I'm kind of leaving grass in between my raised beds. So you, uh, so that's kind of what I'm going to do. And Jermaine's been helping me measure it out because uh, Jermaine doesn't uh, mow the lawn around here. He hasn't mowed the lawn in a long time. Um, and uh, so we just have to make sure the person that mows our lawn can get around everything. And right, that green thing that you just saw, um, they are my covers from my last garden. I took those and they actually fit perfectly fine because that one bed is 20 inches high, 20 inches wide, and then three feet in length. And then that um, kind of dome you saw was three feet by three feet. So it fits perfectly fine. I did that just to keep things away because one of I, my one raised bed is in a corner of this concrete here, so I couldn't get the cover over it because I couldn't stick it. So I didn't think about that. So I'm definitely not going to put tail in that bed again. And I may end up moving it. Um, but I've noticed the one that's not covered, something's already been digging in it. <laughs> so I'm like, that's why I have to uh, cover um, some of these things. And I, that's what I didn't talk about. Even though, like, my garden is completely outside in gas garden, bugs are completely outside. Um, <laughs> our garden is different. Our dad is pretty much old school. Like he tills up everything. Um, he doesn't. You know, he he built Mama herb bed that she's supposed to use for the first time this year. Um, so it's gonna be interesting. Maybe we can even get Mama on here one time to see see how that goes. Um, I'm not. So this may come off where Mom hates gardening. I'm gonna say she hates gardening. How how would you guys describe Mom's uh relationship uh or feeling about a uh, gardening? Because I don't think I don't think she hates it, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, I don't, I think she likes it to a certain extent, but 
It's like, I'll say, for instance, like the green beans. I don't think she too much cares for the green beans because every year the green beans, the green beans always do good. And it's always, once they start growing, you're constantly picking green beans. So I think that's probably one of the main things that she doesn't really like about the gardening. What do you think, Alice? I think mom likes getting the vegetables once they're in the house, but I think she probably isn't the biggest fan of going out there to get the vegetables, like the whole process of getting the vegetables. I think she likes having the fresh, um, fresh food though from the garden. Yeah, I think I think we all know that mom does not like bugs. And I, I will not put mom out here on that cricket story that we all know about. That is going to have to be an But uh, mom is not a fan of bugs. But I do think, I mean, mom likes to cook. I will. I think she really likes to cook. I think if mm -hmm. somehow magically the food would get harvested and just end up in the kitchen, minus any bugs coming onto the food. Because that's the other part. Like, even if we pick it and, like, there's a bug on it. And when mom's cleaning the sink, she does not uh, appreciate that either. So I think if she just had <laughs> cleaned, harvested, harvested food, um, I think she would be fine. Um, the question I have here is how do you get other family members on board with growing food? Um, well, Alice, you have two girls. How do you get them involved or, like, motivated to kind of garden or, like, participate or believe in it or want to do it? Well, I um, started gardening when they was younger, and they would go out and um, help me um, like harvest the um, – vegetables and some fruit um, but um, I normally ask them what they want to grow because if they're putting their input into it they'll most likely eat it as well and then um, I just let them help me with the whole process like planting the stuff and if we can get some stuff growing this year um, I can have them come out here and harvest and stuff because they're just on the balcony they come out here on their mm -hmm. own and do it and I think they like doing it anyway. They also get to help in um, dad, mom and dad's garden as well. When they're over there, they get um, sent out there to harvest green <laughs> beans and everything else as well. And uh, Sherry, I know you don't have uh, kids, but are there other people that you know that you kind of talk to about gardening and try to get them motivated and even thinking about growing food? Well, I know now since uh, the COVID-19 is going on, a few of my friends at work have um, started doing gardening. Yeah, and that's why I noticed um, it was quite a few weeks ago. I actually posted on the Facebook page because on my website, it tells me like where somebody is when they view the page. I don't know who it is. It just says where. And I have people literally from around the globe getting onto my page. And I had a lot of hits in Indiana, just people getting on and seeing. And what's interesting, most people, um, if they're not into gardening. So I have some people that follow me in gardening land. But a lot of people follow me on my education handle, Educator Barnes. And so... Normally, my Educator Barnes website, which is called EducatorBarnes.com, gets a lot more traffic than my gardening website, even though my gardening website is around way longer. Um, and I've been working on it for years and years and years. But now I'm noticing like there's like a steady competition between the two. And I honestly have been struggling to keep up with both of the websites right now, even though I quote unquote have free time since we're at home. Uh, I don't really find this as free time because because we have the internet and stuff, I still feel like I'm tied to my computer. Like I'm going to be off spring break from my school where I work. And I'm going to be right back in front of this computer pretty much most of the week. Like tomorrow, I have 10 meetings tomorrow. 10. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's going to be uh, interesting <laughs> starting at, I believe, 930. Um, so that's that's a lot going on. But um, just kind of what Alice said, how I got my boys involved is A, have them be part of the whole entire process. And that process really begins with helping um, decide what you grow. Like now when they were younger, they didn't really get no input because like they were just, I mean, when kids are younger, they are still tasting a lot of stuff for the first time. Right. But mm -hmm. as they got older and they were able, they had, they had uh, different experiences with food they had some input. So for this particular garden, I did a video and I'm going to try 
All right, bear with me. I'm gonna try to do a screen share right now <laughs> and see if I can show you guys uh, what uh, what we plan. Okay, hold up. Let's see if I can get this right. All right. What though? Okay, hold up. Okay. Um. Hold up. I know what I want to do. I'm going to pull this out. Okay. All right. Let me see if I can get it this time. Y'all y'all stay with me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All these tools. It's still not letting me do it. Well, okay. I don't know. What I was going to show y'all. Uh, I'll drop the link under the video. Uh, what I was going to show you is we used a Google Doc this year to plan. There's actually a video on our YouTube channel of it. And um, they suggested what they wanted to eat. So we grew carrots because one of them wanted to grow carrots. We grew radishes because pretty much everybody, well, I don't think Jermaine cares too much for radishes, but three out of four people wanted radishes. And actually, we will grow something if just one person wants it, unless it's something like that gets out of control. Like we have to be considerate of the fact like, if one person wanted pumpkins and one person wanted uh, honeydew melons and one person wanted watermelons, like all those vines get out of, out of control. But I still, one of the questions I was asked um, recently, will I still do vertical gardening since I have twice as much space than I did before? Actually, yes, because there were some things we weren't able to grow last year because I didn't have space even with the vertical gardening. So we still plan to grow our melons up. And I have on the YouTube channel, there's a video. I think it has like 3,000 views, which is crazy to me. That's my one video that has outperformed my education videos. That one, and, and people will still comment on it. One of the number one questions I get asked is where did I get the bags that I used to hold the melons? This year, I'm going to do my vertical gardening differently because I ran into a problem, which I'll probably talk about in another video um, that, uh, to try to troubleshoot. But I plan uh, to still do that. So um, we had a lot of good uh, good engagement here. I really appreciate uh, the comments here. Uh, Al, just share. Do you have any closing thoughts for our viewers? Um, Not I don't really. have anything. I mean, I, but I'm I agree. To do the Katana Garden and help we get uh, get an album started up on Facebook. I'm showing the process and everything, but. Just everybody keep your fingers crossed that I get something growing this this um season. And I, I agree with that. The reason like I started the reason I started the website was I was getting so many questions from our family members about what we were doing, and somebody suggested I make a website. So that's how the website got started. And that was way back 2014, I think I started the website, uh Gardner Chicole, and then the Facebook page came. And if you know, I try to keep it real. I'm like, look, the fox in my neighborhood. <laughs> look, um, a chickmunk got caught in the thing. Look, Southern ate up the whole bell pepper plant. I only love one bell pepper. Like, I really try to keep it real because sometimes you get on people's Instagram and social media and everything is looking perfect. I be like, quit lying. Unless you got your whole entire garden completely covered, your your stream is a lie, a bold faced lie. That's not real, and you're not helping people if you're not telling the truth about. You got to fight the four layer creatures. You got to fight off the bugs. You got to deal with the sun. Oh man, this summer was hot. There wasn't hot any rain, so stuff burned up. Oh man, it rained so much. Everything got drowned and everything got flooded. Um, so I really try to just be real about what's happening. And um, I'm glad that my uh, sisters, first of all, I was good just to see their faces because I really haven't seen their faces in a while. And I know that's like a high <laughs> thing to say. Um, we're in the family group text just to kind of keep up with each other. And we've been sharing photos, but I don't think I ever thought there would be a time where like, you couldn't see people. like, you know, in real life, like you couldn't go hug your parent. Um, and that's just like a real, uh, I think the thing I'm taking away from this COVID-19 is like, people say, don't take stuff for granted. But like, there's little things I thought about. Like, I really took for granted, like the fact that I could go to my parents' house every Sunday. Like, I was—I don't even really do anything when I go over there. I just kind of hang out and watch TV and eat stuff, and get told to go to the garden harvest stuff when it's gardening. But like, the fact that like now that's a thing that I can't do. Uh, I was like, man, this sucks. 
Um, so I say stay encouraged. Um, let us know what you're growing. I will keep you guys updated about Alice and Sherry and how their garden is going. And maybe, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know when it would determine, it be based on when they actually start growing stuff. When they start growing stuff, we'll do another uh, chat. Oh, there's my niece, Zoe. Hi, Zoe. Hi, Zoe. Hi. And you should know Zoe because Zoe's been in some of my gardening uh, videos when she stays at my house. She hasn't been at my new house yet, um, but hopefully, uh, there's Phoenix. Hi, Hi Phoenix. Phoenix. Um, my kids are inside the house on a uh, Nintendo Switch, um, so uh, <laughs> can't see them this time. Um, but I'll have them back on here just to talk about how things are going, uh, whether that's good or whether it's bad. And remember, anybody can be a gardener. You just have to get ready, get set, and, and grow. grow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>